ATP, adenosine triphosphate, this is the energy currency of the body. It's a molecule that powers cellular function. So not calories, not carbohydrate, not fat, not protein. This right here is the only currency the body knows how to use. And then adenosine triphosphate is made up of an adenine protein combined to a, a five molecule ribose sugar, and that makes the adenosine. And then you get the phosphate, which is, uh, it can be either ATP, ADP, or AMP. So mono is equal to one, di is two, and tri is three. And so when you get this, you can have different forms of that. You can have an adenosine monophosphate, which is a one or singular phosphate. You can have an adenosine diphosphate, which is two phosphate molecules. Or of course, you can have the adenosine triphosphate, which is three molecules long. So what powers cellular function isn't so much the uh, consumption of any of these resources. So you're not consuming a phosphate molecule. You're not consuming adenosine or, or ribose. What's happening is that the energy that's holding this phosphate this bonding energy, this phosphate to this adenosine molecule, that's where the energy is stored. Uh, that's what powers the, um, the cellular function. So when we look at the, the stability of this adenosine monophosphate, that's a highly stable molecule. When we get into the adenosine diphosphate, this is a little, uh, little less stable and it's charged up, so there's more energy there, but not as stable. And then when we get into the adenosine triphosphate, we have a lot more energy. So a little bit of energy here, some energy there, and a lot of energy here. And the more, if I would add a, I can't possibly add a fourth phosphate on there, but just as if we could, this would be vibrating all over the place. So this energy here is, is, is high, but it's highly unstable. And it's important to understand as we move forward in the lecture. Um, think of this ATP as a battery, a fully charged battery. And um, think of ATP as highly unstable like TNT or dynamite. So you have this um, high energy, unstable, fully charged battery. And at some point that phosphate molecule is released. That phosphate is um, not uh, consumed, but it's, it's liberated from its ATP complex. You're going from ATP to ADP. It's giving off energy, so you're getting that explosion. That explosion is what's powering cellular function. And you're left now with a discharged ADP. Although there is some energy there, it's not fully discharged like it would be in a battery. And you have an ADP molecule and a free phosphate. So you have this process of going from a fully charged ATP you're going under some kind of hydrolysis that, that liberates that phosphate molecule. It's releasing its energy, and then you're left with a spent ADP plus a free phosphate molecule. As I said, ATP is unstable. You have only about two seconds worth, uh, stored in the muscle. Everything that you need for uh, any of your cellular function is produced on demand. And so there's some other step that goes into this phosphorylation, a fancy way of saying adding a phosphate back into it so that you can recharge your battery. And then it's a cycle going through of ATP, uh, fully charged, unstable, liberating its energy. And then it, you're getting the spent ADP and you are putting this phosphate molecule back on to get back to ATP, back and forth between uh, this phosphorylation hydro hydrolyzed. And so you have energy coming out um, in order to add a phosphate molecule back in there, adding ADP back to ATP, you have to have some energy coming in. And that energy for us comes from food, as we said earlier. And so we have, um, remember, we really can't store ATP, but we can easily store food substrates such as carbohydrate and fat. And then this energy give coming off is powering uh, action potentials from the nervous system, muscular contraction, and any of the biological processes that we have. So this is the cycle here, this ATP-ADP cycle. And it's a, it's a series of, like I said, ATP uh, giving off its energy, and then your, this ADP being resynthesized back into ATP. We can't store ATP, but we can store carbohydrate and fat. And so this whole conversation is going to be about how we take carbohydrate, fat, and sometimes protein, and another substrate called creatine phosphate to produce that ATP. These are done through anabolic reactions. And so the process of breaking larger molecules down into smaller molecules, like so in this of hydrolyzing the ATP into ADP and a phosphate molecule, those are catabolic reactions, yielding energy. And then you have anabolic reactions, which are the synthesis of larger molecules, taking ADP and using some energy and making ATP. And so when we get this concept of metabolism, this is nothing more than the net sum of all the anabolic reactions and catabolic reactions that are occurring in the body. As I said, this is the start of our nutrition aspect, but this is the um, 
breakdown of food into smaller into its smaller aspects. So all food is eventually broken into proteins, complex carbohydrates, and fatty acids. Those fatty acids then are turned into uh, amino acids, glucose, and so forth. And that's what the body uses then to produce a turn ADP into ATP, which is our energy currency. So you're never burning calories, you're never burning carbohydrate, never burning fat. Your body's using that to synthesize um, this ATP into ADP. So you have these catabolic reactions that hydrolyze these anabolic uh, aspects that phosphorylate, and it's using one of these three, phos phosphocreatine, carbohydrate, fat, and occasionally protein if you are, are carbohydrate or fat deprived. And again, the substrate are the macronutrients that you know in your nutrition class of fat and carbohydrate. This can happen in uh, an oxygen environment. So uh, oxygen availability, whether it's aerobic or anaerobic, determines which substrate's being used and how much ATP is be being produced. So in an oxygen environment, you have an anaerobic um, state. And then if you're not in the aerobic state, you may be in an aerobic and and make sure I clarify, and an aerobic state to supplement your ATP production. So we'll talk about this later, but we'll start it now, is that you're never in uh, an aerobic state by itself. You're either in an aerobic state or you're in an aerobic state in addition to an anaerobic supplement. So think of the aerobic state as your motor, your engine, and your anaerobic system as a turbocharger, a supercharger. That helps the motor, the engine go, but you'll never operate just on a supercharger or anything. So it's either aerobic by itself, fully aerobic, um, in an aerobic state like this, or you're in an aerobic anaerobic. Never are you exclusively in an anaerobic state. And this oxygen consumption, uh, or the oxygen availability, is 100% dependent upon the exercise intensity, whether that O2 is present or not. So. This is the introduction of ATP and looking at that conversion of AT ATP to ADP to power cellular function. And then we have this cycling of ADP back into ATP. Our next conversation is uh, getting into the energy systems of how do we make ATP or more importantly, the conversion of ADP into ATP.